morning everyone and welcome to Melbourne's Flemington Racecourse for the final day of the Cup Carnival, Emirates Stakes Day. The most successful Melbourne Cup Carnival ever. Even before a single person comes through a turnstile today, more than 300,000 people have been to the races at Flemington. Extraordinary. Nine race program today, the feature of course, the Emirates Stakes at 2.45, about three and a half hours away. And maybe in the Queen Elizabeth, the Cups King Bart Cummings can make some consolation for not having a runner in the Melbourne Cup on Tuesday. The weather? Absolutely terrific. I'm trying psychology on you. Some showers in the area. Rain and thunderstorms, they say, but hopefully that'll happen a lot later in the afternoon. Top of about 22 degrees, very comfortable, and the wind will pick up from the south-southeast a little later in the day. It's traditionally family day. The children come. Already here they are with mum and dad. Keep the party going and basically have a whole lot of fun. This lot always managed to have fun, but what they haven't done so far this week is pick a lot of winners. One more day to redeem themselves. Our panel, hosted by Peter Donegan, Good morning to you. Good morning, Tim Webster, and good morning, everyone. Well, I think that Tim's just come up with the understatement of the week. It has been a difficult week to pick the winners, but hopefully we might be able to redeem ourselves today. And the illustrious panel has gathered for the fourth day of the Melbourne Cup Carnival. Jenny Chapman, Richard Friedman, John Letts, good morning. Good morning, Pete. And good morning. I think it's very unfair of... Uh... Let's have not said good morning yet. Oh, yes. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Let's I'm just getting in from yesterday. You had three minutes to talk you give me yesterday, so I'm getting the second sentence in today. Good morning, Peter. <laughs> yes, what Letsy is talking about is the media conference before the uh, Emirates Airline Legends race, and uh, I told him yesterday at the media conference he had three minutes to talk, so I was going to ask him a question where the answer would probably ask, uh, last three minutes. So the question was, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, fine, thank you, Peter. Obviously, don't care what I have to say. <laughs> yes, go on then. No, 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 no go on. on. Off you go. No, I've got. No, I'm... oh, he's cracked it. He's yeah. cracked it early. Why don't we scratch some horses? We can do that. Uh, the track condition is all important. We'll find out from uh, Gary Willits a little bit later on because he has walked the track. I wouldn't be at all surprised if we get to a slow track later on today, depending on the weather conditions. Yes. They have had some rain. They have had, but at the moment it's holding up okay, Peter, so we'll just um, have to wait and see throughout the day. Okay, well, I'm going to let you lot scratch all the horses today. And, Jen, we want a better performance from you <laughs> yes, than I'll the try. other day. Okay, in race one, we'll take out number four, eruption, no rider changes, and there's eight runners. What are you laughing at? We've just made a mistake already. Come on. Race two. Race two. Race two, you can take out number 17, Guiscard, number 13, Hang on, Kel number 7, Rich. You've oh, yeah, no. seven. <laughs> I can't read it from 7 here. and 13, 13 are out of the Kel second. Power, and the rider changes are number 6, Neville Wilson, number 17, Matthew Gatt, number 18, Kieran McAvoy, 16 runners, I believe. Let's see, it's up to you to get through this. I'll get this right. Race three, the village road square. Well done. Race no. square? <laughs> Try road show. Road show. You've got Race the glasses square. on upside yeah, down. Well, hey, Rich, you Number seven, Come all tanked up is no, out of the seven. third. There are no rider changes, 11 <laughs> runners. Let's hope we improve. Jen, race four, please. <laughs> Kenny, what have you been doing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Race four, the Sutcliffe Stakes, all clear. No rider changes, 13 runners. <laughs> Brilliant leader. Yeah. Fantastic. Rich? Uh, Hilton on the Park Sprint, race number five. Number one, Toledo. And number three, honour the name of the scratchings. No rider changes, 12 runners. What about the big one, Let's see. Race six, the Emirates Stakes, number 17. Noir Sia and number 18 Cryptavia. No rider changes, 16 runners. Jen? Okay, we move on to race 7 and we take out number 13 Cristalero, number 17 Grand Seattle and number 19 Mystifying. No rider changes and there'll be 16 runners. Race 8, Mr Friedman. Race 8, Queen Elizabeth Stakes, number 9 Liberty Hall. It's a scratching, no rider changes, 11 runners. No, he's oh, trying to be a race caller now. <laughs> yeah, he is a race caller. Race 9, let's see the lucky last. The Nokia. Nokia. OK. <laughs> well, all right. Does that say no, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, get on with it. Uh, race 9, number 16, Surrey Nell, and number 18, Mac Mickey. And number 17 will be ridden by Link Robertson, 16 runners. Beautifully done. Let's have a look at the totes for the big one, the Emirates Stakes this afternoon. Jen, every year we come here saying what an open race this is, and 2,000 is no exception. No, no difference at all here, Peter. There's a, I mean, every horse in the race has got a chance, that's for sure. Umrum's entitled to be favourite, I think, the way he's going. Richie hasn't put a foot wrong this preparation. Absolutely, but you're getting better odds in Queensland and New South Wales about Umrum. He's a bit shorter in Victoria here. Matter of honour there is at $9.40. That's probably a good price about him. Yeah, just I'm worried about the pace in the race, let's see. There's an awful lot of pace in the race, and I think a few will be getting up the front early in this. I think that's what's going to help Umrum, Peter, because he's drawn barrier one, he's got a nice gate, Jim Cassidy, keen to ride him. He had a fall Saturday, but uh, he's going to be the one to beat for sure. Race one tote's all important because this is a two-year-old race. We've got a couple of unraced in this, the scratching number four, Eruption, and uh, Longestine has come up the favourite. 
very good, but very green still, Jennifer. Oh, very green, Peter. Yes, I was watching the tape of, of it yesterday and uh, it missed the start, sort of got back, it was in amongst them, it got to the fence and, well, got to the line extremely impressively, but did so much wrong. That's your only concern down the straight here. Let's have a look at the panel selections for the first. You can see there are quite a few in the betting, only three at double figure odds. I've gone for longer steam. What did you go for, Jen? What's I your like, trifecta? Well, quite nice odds here. Number two, Desert Angel. I thought it was very impressive at Sandown. Only one one start for one win. Um, second, I'd put in number nine, Catman, and number seven, Longest Dean for third. And Devil and number one from Gary Willits is the other one that's got to mention after a good win at Mooney Valley. Now, the Strathfield race predictor for the first race on the program. Didn't have the best of days on Tuesday and Thursday. The humans beat the computer. It's got no idea, the computer. No idea? None. Officially? Officially. OK, well, let's have a look at the 1,000 metre course. And we know that it's straight and it's 200 metres more than Letsy will be riding later in the afternoon in the Emirates uh, Airlines Legends race. I think they'll come down the outside rail where possible today, Jen. I think so, Peter. I mean, there's been a lot of racing. We've had three days of racing, so um, more than likely. And down the computer's outside. gone straight to the inside rail, so there you go. Yeah, well, it depends what's riding the computer, you see, <laughs> because the jockeys make the decisions, Let's see, don't Where they? are you going to go, John? The thing that worries me about the computer, they're all in the same colours, these horses. <laughs> and I like haven't picked a winner out of it yet. Makes it hard for Danny, doesn't it? It does make it very hard to see, oh, well, the club colours all white. <laughs> <laughs> they're dead no, I, I think I'll just go straight down the middle. That's the safer spot. Seven, three and nine in the first, so it's gone for Catman, a first starter. Now that's intriguing how the computer can come up with all the facts and figures and can go with <laughs> one, we don't know how it goes. <laughs> Seven, three and nine, a Catman to win from Malagra Miss, which has got a bit of a chance too. Now there is the Ron Hutchinson Excellence Award. Interesting that Karen McAvoy is on top at the moment with 14. He is the Melbourne Cup winning jockey, but he wasn't in front after the Melbourne Cup the other day. So he got some good points for his rider aboard Lang Kwai Fong, and that will be decided later on today. Well, as I said, it's all important what the tote's doing in the first, all important what's happening in the betting ring, not only for this race, but right throughout the day. Here's the gentleman who can tell us everything that happens in the betting ring, Tim Gossage. Yeah. G'day, Tim. Yeah, g'day, Pete. Good morning, everyone. Well, 28 races so far and just two favourites throughout the Melbourne Cup Carnival. The average winning price, 12 to 1. Quite staggering. The bookmakers a long way in front. The bookmakers are expecting plenty of money today from the punters for today's nine-race program, and it hasn't taken long for the punters to fire up because I can tell you, on the tote, number seven, Catman, is six to one. In fact, it's five to one now. Five to one. In the ring, it has tumbled in to about a third that price. We have a new favourite. It has been a big, big go. Catman, number seven. Peter, on PSB Day, it's back to you. Hang on. Now, wait a minute. What's PSB Day? Hunters strike back. Oh, <laughs> well, let's hope so. I hope you're right. I thought you were going to say, please stop betting there for a minute. Uh, good luck to you, Tim. So, Catman, I think the computer's obviously unloaded here on the first and had some money on it. We'll keep you up to date as the race draws closer. And there is the horse in the mounting yard prior to the running of the first, this first starter. As you've already seen, we've got the magnificent trophy in the studio here with us for the Emirates Stakes, the big one later on, half a million dollars, Group 1. We go to the break now with Milton Black's lucky numbers. Good luck, everyone, on the final day of the Melbourne Cup Carnival. We are off and running, and the kids are here in their numbers. Stay in the life of 20 year old Karen McAvoy when he won the Foster's Melbourne Cup aboard Brew on Tuesday. And we have reached the final day now, and we're going to talk more about the big race, the Emirates Stakes, coming up later in the day. Jim, we spoke about the pace in the race. There's going to be a big queue to get up the front here, I think. There is, for sure, Peter. And, uh, you know, it's such a good feel, the top weight being Testa Rossa, of course. Got to carry the 59 today, doesn't he? And, uh, and a wide barrier as well. I wonder whether or not he can live up to it with that sort of weight and barrier. Rich, Matter of Honour reminds me 
a lot of Brazil Bay, the horse that Paul Perry bought here a few years ago. He stepped up through the grades and then went on to win the mile race on the last day of the carnival. But I'm just worried about all the pace in the race against an inexperienced horse today. Well, as you know, he's also a brother of Might and Power. Half brother. Half brother of Might yeah. and Power. And um, I think he's a, you know, he's a really promising horse. Race is a bit like Might and Power, with that very heavy action in front, very um, extravagant action in front. Um, I think he probably needs uh, firm going to show the best of him, but he's not, uh, you know, ineffective on on uh, slow going. So I think he's right there. Runners are on their way to the stalls for the first, and we'll be checking in with them shortly. Let's see. You think the race might be set up for the swoopers a little bit with all the pace up the front? Well, I can see it being run. Jimmy Casty, I could, I would say Jimmy can dictate what he wants the race to be run at. Um, run. He can either go to the front, slow him up, matter of honour, most likely take it off him. Uh, he can have the box seat. I, I think Amram's got a perfect barrier. I, I think any jockey in that race would have loved to have drawn one. I think he's had a perfect preparation too. Let's get the selections of the experts. Ladies first, Jenny Chapman. Well, I'm going for one at a little value here, Peter. I like number 13, Crawl. I thought uh, he could come into this very well. Nice open track here at Flemington. OK, well, there are the selections for the first. So it's uh, two, nine and one from us in race one. But we're talking about the Emirates. So give us your trifecta there. The trifecta. I'm putting in number 11, Matter of Honor. Very impressed with him the other day. Number eight, Weasel Will, also been racing in great form. And number 16, a bit of a roughy, Gallopini. There they are. 13, 11. 11 and 8 and number 16 is the best outsider. Richard Friedman? Well, I'm going to go for Scoozy, please, number 6. He hasn't done anything wrong this spring. He's been uh, he's been very, very consistent. I think he's due to win a race and he deserves to win one. From uh, Matter of Honour, he'll be very hard to beat. Got a lot of respect for him. Umrun, he's in form too. And uh, Camarine and my outsider. Let's see. Uh, I've gone for um, Rum. I think the barrier is going to make a big, uh, big difference here. I, I like Hyatt to run second. He's a back marker, but he gets home very fast. Cusy, please. I'm like Richard. The horse has been racing well, and I've put El Morada in. Uh, if the track dries out, which I, don't, I doubt we're doing lots of will, but uh, he's the best outsider in the race. He went terrific the other day. He got a mile out of his ground. Trouble is with him, Pete. Though, he can't have it affected at all, can he? No, the that's track. right. I've put him, put him in as the best outsider as well. Um, Rum number two for me from 11 Matter of Honor and five higher. He's one of these horses that gets into a lot of trouble high, but if he gets a clear run. Gee, he's going to be uh, pretty hard to beat. But you could have 12 picks in the Emirates and still miss the winner quite easily. Well, we've been doing that all week. Yeah, we've been very good at it. We've got enough practice. We've yes, let's talk it. about that. <laughs> all right, OK, now, who's doing, who's doing best of, of us this here? lot? That uh, man on the far side, on the John Lentz. I'm well running second. Mm -hmm. I'm last. You are last. I'm last. I'm yeah. How many winners I've have lost you tipped? Listen, confidence. How many we, winners have you tipped? I've tipped less winners than you, but when the punters go home from the races, they don't count how many winners they've tipped or backed. They count how much money they've got in their pocket. And did you and have I'm in any front left? of you on that. Have okay. you had any left? This I've, way? I haven't got a lot left, but <laughs> we'll see what happens at the end of the day. Pete, just getting back to the last race the other day, we had all those tips and none of us tipped the same horse. Remember that? You yeah. said none of us tipped the same horse. Now, I worked out a system that you could win on it. If you'd have boxed those six horses together, which cost you $120 in a trifecta, yeah. you'd have got it. And what to pay? 120. Oh, beautiful. So you would have broken exactly. even. And that's great exactly. because you probably need the money. <laughs> Let's have a look at the first. They're going up behind the gates and shortly they'll be moving in. It is over the uh, straight 1,000 metre course. Here are the tote figures as they stand at the moment. And Longestine is still the favourite at $3.40. Remember, there's been a good push for number seven, Catman. It's $5.70. It's the fourth favourite at the moment. Devilland number one at $4.10. And Malagra misses a bit of a tip as well at $4.40. And Desert Angels in the picture as well. So I've got any number of chances. Golly, Cable and Tain are the ones that look as though they're the long odds. So why don't we have a look at some of the runners out behind the gates here for the first race. The Clemenger BBDO Maribyrn on plate. The 130th running of this time-honoured race. And you can see that one or two are just a little bit stubborn. Longer She did that at Morford. Oh, now. She did this at Morford the other day. was very, very bad. It was a five-minute wait nearly for the race. Uh, Tony McAvoy, the foreman for the uh, PRA stable in that? Adelaide, told me she's beautiful at home, but this is her trait. Yeah. She came out the gate last and still won. He said she's a flyer at home, but this is the trait that the punters must know about if you haven't backed her yet, and she puts on this act, she's, she can switch the other way. I don't like it when horses do that behind the gates. Yeah. No, it's that's... not a good sign. No. A veterinary surgeon will just have a, a quick look at her to make sure she is OK after rearing up and uh, hitting the deck there. Peter, do you think the comfort blanket would help on a filly like this? Richard, you'd oh, seen I, it I don't times. know. She's got it. She, she knows where she doesn't want to go. Mm. She doesn't want to go on the gates. Just explain the comfort blanket, Rich. Well, it's a blanket they put over a back, like a horse rug on the horse. When they put them in the gates, it stops the, the, the side bars of the gates touching the horse around the flank. And a lot of fillies like her don't like to be touched around the flank. 
and uh, it does give them the impression they're just wearing a rug, and they're used to that feeling. You know, they've got her off the ground. They are they lifting that filly into the, the stalls. Look, look at that. <laughs> she if does not want to get the front ones off the ground as well. They get her in. Now, yeah. that rug does work very well, though, doesn't it, Richard? It does. It does yeah. tend to settle down the ones mm. that want like to play Like you said, Richard, she knows where she doesn't want to go. You wonder what she's going to be like too when they finally get her in. Hopefully, she will stand there. So they're lining in pretty well here once they get Longestein in. Now, I want to cross up to the commentary box uh, shortly with Gary Willis and get the track report. Tim Gossage, we might check in with him just before they do go to see if there has been any further money for this one Catman or any money for anything else. Tim, can you report in from the betting ring? Yeah, Pete, still good money for Catman, but now because Longestein's got out in the betting, there's been a bit of specking for it, but Catman and Longestein pretty close in the market, but I say that Catman will jump favourite. Gary Willis, quickly, the state of the track, you've been out there. Cut up uh, five horses out. The track is uh, like new ground. All but, right. uh, I wouldn't be frightened to back any horse on this track today. OK, well, they're just about right here for the first. So let's say good morning to Dan Maliki. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, everyone. They're all locked away for the first. Catman, a big go, number seven. Now, getting up on the gates is Catman. That was Catman rearing up. Settles now. Still, the jockey's calling out for help. Now, one of the horses have got their head up over the gate. Yeah. We'll get him back. Now it's better now. That may have even been cable. So there's only a field of eight. Some very nervy uh, youngsters here. And they're racing now. And jumping out well, Golly, with Devlin. They made their intentions clear, going straight to the outside. In fact, they're all going to work their way across to the grandstand side of the track. Langustin jumped away well. Cable will drop in behind them in the early part of the race. Uh, then Malagra Mist, who's the closest one towards the inside of the track. Desert Angel ahead of it. Tane back to about second last. Catman showing very good speed now. Was able to work up on the outside of Devlin. Langustin just in behind them, but very green. They've got a slight check at that point from Desert Angel. Then Golly, Malagra Mist. Cable on about eight lengths away. Tane as they run to the 400. Catman just the leader from Devlin. Langustin coming at them and over on the inside, Desert Angel, then came Cable. Golly and Malagra missed. Langustin went to the lead, 2.50 to go. Catman is struggling now, coming after the leader. Langustin is Desert Angel. It's Langustin just in front, trying to reel it in. Uh, was Desert Angel, but Langustin's going well, and despite that mishap, she's drawing away. And Langustin will win it by four links. Desert Angel second, third Malagra miss, and then Devlin. Catman next time, and then came... Uh, Golly from Cable and Tane at the tail of the field. The time was 57.6. Yes, very good win, Dan. Langustine, you know, all the raps about her have been spot on. She jumped nicely. Had a lovely little cart along behind the two leaders. And when Damien Oliver brought her out uh, to the outside of them, she just uh, worked away nicely. Went to the line very well. Shifted out at about the 600 metres. Uh, might have just overreacted to another horse shifting away from her but she was strong on the end. Uh, there was nothing that really got close to be a real significant danger to her in the last furlong, Gary. No, well, here she is. She's just uh, gone to the lead here. She's about two or three horses off the outside rail. That's definitely the place where you want to be, even out further, right on the outside. But it's, as Richard Freeman said the other day, two-year-olds are inclined to get away, but this filly, the Hazers uh, educate their horses so well, it's gone pretty straight here. Damien Oliver just riding hands and heels. Done a very good job. Right on the line, nice and strong. A filly by Dane Hill from Prawn Cocktail. Yeah, and Desert, an easy winner. Desert Angel ran well. And the uh, three, my Lager Miss, one trained by Leon Corson, ran home nicely. So that's 9 2 3. Fourth in was Devlin, showed speed knocked up. Likewise, Catman, number seven. May have used up a bit of extra petrol from the gate to work across to the outside. It was one of the first uh, beaten there, Catman. So Langustine opens up the day. Peter Hayes, Damien Oliver. Here's Mark Aston after race one. It took a while to get into the gates, Pete. Oh, gee, she gave us a heart attack. She uh, did that at, at uh, Morpherville the first start, and we've done obviously a fair bit of practice with her since. And she goes in every time. She just walks in, walks in, walks in, and she's just perfect. And she gets to the races, and she's just got a bit to learn there yet. So I'm sure the stewards will have something to say to me today, but, um, you know, we'll overcome that. We've got plenty of time now before she comes back for the autumn, and she's obviously an outstanding filly. Yeah, she was impressive today, wasn't she? She was. She learnt a lot from her first start, jumped and raced 
where we expected her to race at Morpheville and was just too good. Congratulations, Pete. Good start. Thank you. Well done. Now, she was impressive, Peter, wasn't she? Very impressive, and she doesn't know much about racing yet, Mark Oston, but uh, this filly is something out of the box, I think. Longestine number nine, ridden by Damien Oliver here in the first, defeating Desert Angel and Malagra Miss. And I wouldn't be surprised if she goes on to be top class Let's see, but she does have to change her attitude. Once she realises, Pete, that there's not going to hurt her in the barriers, I think you'll find she'll change her attitude and she'll, she'll, she'll with star. You think she'll go on, Rich? Only if she changes her attitude, and I don't like her attitude at the moment, but uh, that will remain to be seen. I'll keep an open mind on that. It's circumspect. She's got a real climbing action, Jen. She was just having a good look around, didn't know what was going on in the race, but she still ran away with them, and Damien sat up on her at the finish. Oh, I you think know how she's been named, don't you, Jen? You know she's Yes, named. I do, yeah. yeah. She's named after. <laughs> yeah, I think you're about to tell us. She's named after a, a, a freshwater prawn in South Africa, mm -hmm. and she's out of a mare called uh, Prawn Cocktail. I see. So she's well named, isn't she? So what was it you were actually oh, trying oh, to say, oh, sorry, there, Jen? Well, the Hayes Camp. They they put the blinkers on her for her first race as well, and she, you know she's obviously got a few little attitude problems, but she's certainly got the ability there. Now the time for the journey is important, 57.6. So. The people here at Flemington must be congratulated. This track has held up. There was a lot of rain in Melbourne overnight. There's one of the part owners, president of the Carlton Football Club, Mr John Elliott, and he's got a pretty big opinion of this filly. I know David Hayes there, Amanda Elliott. So congratulations to the connections. Longestine will win more. Desert Angel second. Malagrum is third. Numbers nine, two and three will be back with the weight signal and the dividends after the running of the first at Flemington on Emirates Day. There's that Dane Hill filly, Longestein, striding to the line. Damien Oliver sitting down and looking nice for the photo at the end of the race because he didn't have much work to do over the last 200. Had to work a bit early. There's Amanda Elliott sitting uh, or standing beside husband John. And they've got a smart one there. Congratulations coming from Peter and David Hayes. And well done to the many more wins in store. If she does, just adjust her attitude a little bit at the gates because as we saw, there were some anxious moments for the connections. And as Peter Hayes said, they had a couple of mild heart attacks before that filly did go in. It's family day here today and uh, lots of the youngsters are here with uh, mums and dads and uncles and aunties and grandparents and there's going to be fashions on the field for the kids and we'll be keeping you abreast with that throughout the day and look at the kids enjoying themselves. Great to see them at the races. We've already had record crowds and it's been an absolutely magnificent carnival here at Flemington, the 2000 Melbourne Cup Carnival. So we're just waiting for the correct weight signal here in the first at Flemington for the numbers 9, 2 and 3, Longestine defeating Desert Angel and Malagra Miss, repeating that the time 57.6 seconds, 2.1 outside the record, but that's about what you'd expect for two-year-olds anyway, and especially given the fact that that filly is still pretty green. So still no weight signal yet after the running of the first. We're about to get it now, hopefully, as Mr Des Gleeson walks over. We've already had 28 races. Correct weight. Now we've had 29 and no protests as yet. And now that I've said that, you know what'll happen later <laughs> in the day. Correct weight is there, brought to you by Toshiba on the first, so let's pay you all around Australia. Oh, well, if it does, Pete, we'll give it to us, your winning selection. <laughs> Langustine, number nine, four dollars, ten, one, six. And if you've backed it, I think you should throw something the way of the, the people behind the barriers, because if it wasn't for them, it would not have run. 230 Desert Angel, 150 Malagra Miss, Quinella, 1590, Exacta, 2350, and the Trifecta, 92 dollars, 90. Tim, Langustine, we saw it drift right out of the market. Bookies kept it safe and opened the favourite, but it was quite a different story in the ring, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, due to the money for Catman, it certainly got the drift, but there was a bit of stay support just moments before the race and hopefully you had time to get on because it did shorten about half a point did the eventual winner in that last race langerstein on to race two this is one for brett treble they think he's aboard number 10 dante's fury and it's opened up the favorite in the ring and there's good specking for number 11 emotional success peter donigan tim gossage in the betting ring after the first and uh, we've got smiles on our faces up here and hopefully we'll have another one after the second the honda civic sprint you can see that Cullen's come up $7.50 and is certainly in contention along with number three, Happy Pate, here. And the rest of those on page one are at pretty good odds. Valderrama, the best of them. Neville Wilson, the rider there. Uh, just in case you don't have that in your guides, we've got number 10, Dante's Fury, coming up the tote favourite of $3.60. Better in Queensland and New South Wales. Emotional success in the betting at $8.70. And big odds about the bottom two in race two on the card. 
Well, uh, let's see what the experts have come up with here. Dante's Fury for you, Jen, the favourite. You don't normally tip no, favourites. No, I don't, Peter, but... Getting uh, desperate. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah, I've had my confidence absolutely shattered this week. I'm going for number 10, Dante's Fury. Terrific win first up at Seymour, and um, I think he can go on with it. Well, Dan's going along with you. Rich, you and I agree. Happy paint. Happy paint. It'll run all right. Happy paint. Goes well first up and uh, is trained by Jim Mason down at Mornington and will be fit. And there are the predictor selections in the second race it's gone for Dante's Fury number 10 to win from number six Valderrama and number three Happy Paint so that's from the predictor in race two doesn't give me a lot of confidence no, <laughs> no. tipping, tipping the uh, unraced in the first yeah it might as well tip scratchings I reckon <laughs> didn't run a place let's go to the presentation after the first our master of ceremonies in the mounting yard is Mr Rob Gaylard good morning Rob Thank you. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, everybody. First presentation today, Mrs. Sally Churnside, representing the BRC. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Mark Pierce, the Managing Director of Clemager BBDO, to begin our presentations. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, it's a very great pleasure for us to be involved in our uh, second Melbourne Cup Festival, or Carnival, shall I say. Uh, what a wonderful race to start proceedings with. Uh, and without further ado, I'd like to uh, congratulate John Elliott, the owner of a wonderful uh, horse, and which I backed, I'm happy to say. Uh, well done, John. Yes, well done, John. Well done, Amanda. And well done to Damien Oliver there with that filly Longestine in the first race. And paying pretty decent odds, too, at $4.10 on Super Tab. The next, the second of nine on the final day of the carnival is the new Honda Civic Sprint over 1,100 metres. The starting time for that race is 11.55. Scratchings are 7 and 13. We'll be back soon. How cute do they look? And the kids all look terrific today as we look at Milton Black's lucky numbers. And there's a good way of making sure you get on television. Make sure your dad's in our OB van here at Flemington. John Palmer, one of our producers, is the father of Bear, Jack and Ashley. And don't they look terrific? Pretty groovy, eh? So cute. <laughs> so nice and Which one's Bear? There's four of them there. Uh, bear was on the left. <laughs> the two bears on the left. Yeah. A great day, great family day, and uh, always wonderful to see the youngsters out here. Maybe for their first day at the races. I remember the first time I came out to a Melbourne Cup carnival like it was yesterday, and I couldn't wait to get back. And I've been coming back ever since because it truly is one of the great racing events of the world. Well, uh, let's head down to the Channel 10 marquee now and talk about the fact that this has been such a wonderful event. Already a record crowd of 310,000 before anyone came through the gate today. It's been absolutely magnificent. To talk more about that, Sandra Sully has a couple of very special guests with her. Well, I'm joined now by the Chairman of the VRC, Mr Andrew Ramsden, and the VRC's Chief Executive, Mr Dal Monteith. Gentlemen, welcome, of course, to Flemington. I don't really need to extend a welcome. The Greens couldn't be any broader, could they? What a sensational week. Well, you know, record crowds every day. It's, you know, serious record crowds. It's just made a, a wonderful week, and let's hope the weather hangs in there for today, and we'll truly make the four-day record by 50,000. That's good. It is good. Now, Dale, it's your first year with the VRC. Um, we may attribute the success to you, but I know it's a little unfair. It's very shared. <laughs> what, have, what do you think has contributed to the enormous success of the carnival so far? Well, one thing I've been terribly impressed with, Sandra, is really the, the organisation that goes into this carnival. And I know full well that uh, come next week we'll be starting on planning for next year. The team effort involved is just something that's extraordinary. It's all the staff that work in the office on race days, Channel 10, the, just the promotion in general, all the media, it just seems to have come together so well this year. And I think also the uh, the early AFL Grand Final, the Olympics following on, everyone's in a party mood and, and just wants to be here and you can see the results that we've achieved over these last three days. Well, we've had record attendances and in three days we equaled last year's entire carnival, so I mean, we don't want to say no one can turn up today, but <laughs> we're absolutely going to, you know... Yes. Uh, wipe the record clean, aren't we? We'll smash it, so to speak. Smash it. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about the TAB situation on court.